Uh, I prefer gold to silver, you know, for my metal. I figured you'd recommend me for one since I uh, pulled your boots out of the... F <laughs> if we present you with a medal, you'll end up sitting on stage listening to politicians make speeches for a couple of hours. That's a good point. They'd probably make me shave, too. I spent the last seven weeks working on this baby. No medal's worth that. So, Commander, why don't you tell me why you're really here? Wait a second. That's seven weeks of growth? Now, let's talk some more about Joker's beard. That's seven weeks of growth? I mean, like... I mean, I, I know I'm not the most hirsute gentleman, especially in the facial region, but he did that in seven weeks? That's, that's impressive. That's good work, Jeff. Do you like, do you feed that thing nutrients or something? Jeff doesn't shave because if he does, he will snap his own jaw or he will break off his arm. Like he'll just, he'll just break his elbow on his jaw. Either are possible. You have one animation. Commander, do you have a minute? I always make time for my officers. Off the record, I think there's something wrong here. This Saren is looking for records on some kind of galactic extinction, but we can't get backup from the council? Sorry, Commander, there's writing on the wall here, but someone isn't reading it. The council doesn't want to believe anything's wrong. I'd call it human nature, but... I hear you. It, it just seems like a group that's been around as long as the Council should see this coming. I mean, it's funny, we finally get out here and the final frontier was already settled. And the residents don't even seem impressed by the view. Or the dangers. The final frontier. Well, well. You're a romantic. Did you sign on for the dream, Alenko? Secure a man's future in space? Yeah, I, re I read a lot of those books when I was a kid where the hero goes to space to prove himself worthy of a woman he loves or, you know, for justice. Maybe I was a romantic in the beginning, but I thought about it after brain camp. Uh, sorry. Biotic acclimation and temperance training. I'm not looking for the dream. I just want to do some good. See what's out here. Sorry if I got too informal. Protocol wasn't a big focus back in BOT. Brain Camp. <laughs> Brain Camp is a great name for it. Tell me about it. Biotic acclimation and temperance didn't last past the airlock. To the kids they hauled in, it was Brain Camp. Sorry, hauled in is unkind. We were encouraged to commit to an evaluation of our abilities so an understanding of biotics could be compiled. Mm -hmm. There are worse results of accidental exposure to element zero in the womb. Beats the brain tumors some kids grew up with. Is there some question about how you were exposed? My mother was downwind of a transport crash. It was before there were human biotics, a little after the discovery of the Martian ruins. It only gets iffy around 63 when Kinetics was running out of first-gen subjects. Until then, they'd relied on accidentals. A bunch of guys in suits show up at your door after school, and next thing you know, you're out on Jump Zero. This is, this is a neat little bit of war about how humanity came to discover biotic powers and biotic potential. Like the whole, one of, one of the key things about the Mass Effect universe that allowed humanity to make the jumps forward that they did was the discovery of Element Zero, this essentially MacGuffin just, you know, do whatever you need it to unobtainium type super rare resource that happens to allow a lot of beings to exhibit potential and powers that are very similar to magic spells in other bioware games <gasps> imagine that but uh <laughs> so humanity discovered this element zero and Ezo's in everything yeah and you know Caden being a human biotic is able to deliver so much lore just through his backstory. Like, we just learned, oh, there's a camp, there are military training camps for humans with biotic potential. And if you're a human with biotic potential, you are heavily encouraged to join the military so that you can be used as a weapon. Gee, I wonder if that's fucking terrible. I wonder if maybe there are other facilities and other organizations and other places where humans who exhibit biotic potential are heavily encouraged to be turned into weapons. 
I wonder if maybe that has some psychological impact on some of those humans. I wonder if we might learn about that further on down the series. Hmm. Hmm. Nah, it'll probably be forgotten. Anyway, tell me about Jump Zero. Jump Zero is Gagarin Station, right? What's it like? Yeah, that's the official name. Biggest and farthest facility we had for decades. Right on the termination shock, the outer edge of the solar system. It's where they did all the goose chase FTL research before we caught on to using mass effect fields. It was a sterile research platform when I was there. See, right there. Right that little sentence. It's where they did all the goose chase FTL research. That tells you that before humanity discovered the Mass Effect, before they found those Prothean, Prothean ruins on Mars, they had scientists trying to figure out ways to travel faster than light. And those, those tests turned out to be wild goose chases. So now, 35, 40 years later, they're just called the goose chase tests. That is just a cute little bit of world building. It's a little bit of lore. It's like, oh, even before we found these ruins on Mars at, you know, the end of the 21st century, it's, you know, we're exploring the outer reaches of our solar system. We have people, you know, he said right at the edge of the solar system. Maybe there are like orbital stations around Uranus and Neptune. You know, that little bit of world building is super cool. There were other kids in the same boat, right? At least you weren't alone out there. That's true. We did have a little circle that'd get together every night before lights out. We didn't have much to do, though. It was a research platform then, and Kinetics kept Jump Zero off the extranet to prevent leaks. Time to talk or time to boink? Uh, yeah, Shepard can be flirty. You were all teenagers. I'm sure you found other ways to occupy the time. I wish the lighting would figure out what it's doing with her hair. Thing, Commander. Not lightly, anyway. There was a girl I spent a lot of time with, but we kept our clothes on. Rana. She was from Turkey. Her family was very rich. But she was smart and charming as hell. Beautiful, but not stuck up about it. Like you, I guess. Ma'am. Not subtle, Caden. Not subtle. Sounds like she was special to you. She was. Maybe she felt the same. But things never felt together. Training, you know. Kind of feel like I need to play through this game now. This is way more in-depth than I gave it credit for. It is incredibly in-depth. And, like, for each conversation choice here... Like, obviously, the individual lines don't have a huge choice, but your Commander Shepard can feel so different from another Commander Shepard just for making these little conversation choices. And, like, the order in which you choose to do things, choosing not to do things, there's so many things you can do. There are so many different playthroughs. The Mass Effect series is cool and good. I don't know if I need an on-screen counter or something for every stream, When I, how many times I'm... I feel myself motivated to say the Mass Effect series is cool and good. But you know what? The Mass Effect series is cool and good. You know of any intentional exposures for certain? No one knows. Doesn't mean they didn't happen. As big as the exposures were, it was hard to track down accidentals. It was different then. No one knew the potential, so there wasn't a lot of regulation. Anything Kinetics did was gold. I'm not saying they intentionally detonated drives over our outposts, but in retrospect, they were damn quick on the scene. Ghosty has a lot to say about Caden's backstory, the information it gives, his mother being probably, like he just alluded to it here, maybe potentially, you know, intentionally exposed to Ezo so that her baby would be biotic. That's, uh... Sketchy mega corporations, you guys. Jump Zero is a long way from home. What was it like? The grand gateway to humanity looks a lot better in the vids. Anyway, this was supposed to be a casual debrief, not a bull session about stuff that happened years ago. Caden, I came here to talk. We're talking. Keep talking. Dumbass. I wanted to get to know you a little better. That's all. Thanks for the talk, Caden. Well? 
You're welcome, ma'am. You, uh, make a habit of getting this personal with everyone? Hmm. So now Caden is outright flirting with me here. Obviously, I don't think this is going to be like, oh, you are now locked into romancing Caden. But, like, the Paragon... The Paragon and neutral options here are both going to be like, yes, I would like to, you know, I am interested in with you. And this one is just, uh, no, you're not special. Hmm. Eh, what the hell? Let's be friendly. No, no, I don't. We'll talk again later. I'll, uh, I'll need some time to process that, Commander. But, yeah. I'd like that. So yeah, Shepard is officially at least flirty with Caden. Uh, spoiler alert, Shepard is going to be at least flirty with everyone. Hi, Rex. What do you want, Shepard? Fine. Why did you become a mercenary? Lots of reasons. Like? Such as? Such as, I needed to get out of our system. I needed to eat. I needed to survive. Why not stay and help your people? I tried to help. That's why I had to leave. What happened? I was betrayed. I was head of a small tribe. We were trying to restore order after the war. But the other tribes were against us. They followed Jared. One of the few warlords who survived the war with the Turians. But he was old, and so were his ideas. He wanted to continue the war. He wanted us to fight. Turians, Salarians, each other. It didn't matter who, as long as we were fighting. What did you want? I just wanted Jared to shut up. To stop his ranting. I wanted him to stop leading the tribes astray. But he couldn't understand how much things had changed. We didn't have the numbers to go to war. Even if we did, the Genophage made sure we couldn't replenish our numbers fast enough. I told them all to forget about war. We needed to focus on breeding. At least for one generation. And for a while, we were getting through. Some of the tribes started coming around. I take it the Warlord didn't appreciate that. No, he didn't. He arranged a crush with the tribes. A meeting on neutral ground. He wanted to talk. We met at the Hollows, near the graves of our ancestors. The skulls of our dead laid bare to remind us where we come from and where we all go. It's as sacred as any Krogan place can be. Violence is forbidden. Gee, I wonder where this story's going. Sounds like a trap to me. You must have suspected as much. I did. But when your father invites you to a crush, well, there are some laws that even we hold sacred. Oh, Jared is Rex's father. Also, can, can we just talk about how the Krogan are this, you know, super, super great alien race? And they have all of these very, you know, interesting, you know, strong-sounding names like, well, Rex. And, and, and the key figure in this story is a guy named Jared. Jared was your father? He was. Until that day. We talked. But we didn't get anywhere. When it was clear that I wouldn't join him... He gave the signal. His men leapt from the graves of our ancestors like Krogan undead. The few that were loyal to me died quickly. I escaped with my life, but not before I sank my dagger deep into my father's chest. That is why I left, and that's why I'll never go back. Ron Howard voice. Rex would go back. You must have family other than your father. Don't you miss them? You trying to make me cry, Shepard? 
I've got some unfinished business with my family, but that's all. What kind of business? <sighs> Before I left, I made an oath to my father's father. I swore to recover my family's battle armor. It was taken from him after the uprising. What's so important about this armor? It's a relic. Useless, really. But it was worn by five generations of my family before the war. It's rightfully mine. Originally, it was taken by the Turian military. We weren't allowed armor or weapons after the war. Now, it's in the hands of Ton Actus, a Turian scum who collects relics from the war. He's made millions selling Krogan artifacts that were stolen from my people. He's got several bases where he stores his goods, all fortified and guarded. I just don't know which base has my family's armor. I have no memory of this quest. It is entirely possible that I have never played it. Just tell me where to start looking. I'll upload the data to your nav system. But Commander, I want to be there when you find him. So long, Rex. Shepard. So this is Rex. We've met him before. And let's talk to Tally. Hi, Tally. Shepard, I'm glad you're here. Good to see you smiling again, so to speak. I'm sleeping much better now. I guess I'm getting used to how quiet your ship is. I still think a lot about my pilgrimage, though. I know Steren's our top priority, but with all the worlds we go to, I was hoping to find something to bring back to the flotilla. We've still got a long way to go. You'll find something to take back. Yes, but it cannot just be some derelict ship my people can use for salvage. It has to be more than that. There's a lot expected of me. What's so special about you? It's my father. He's the senior member of the Admiralty Board. He's one of only five people who can overrule the decisions of the Conclave for the good of the migrant fleet. My father is responsible for the lives of 17 million people. Our entire race is in his hands, and I'm his only child. So are you some kind of heir to the Quarian throne or something? No, it doesn't work that way. My father's position isn't hereditary. I'll probably never serve on the Admiralty Board myself. Officially, I'm just the same as any other citizen. But it doesn't work that way in practice. People have always treated me differently because of who my father is. You must get all kinds of special privileges. I probably had it easier than most growing up. But it's not all good. People like my father have enemies. And they're not above using me to get to him. Gee, the game's talking a lot about Tally's father, etc., etc., etc. That must be tough on you. My people place a high value on family and ancestry. There's an unspoken expectation that I'll live up to my father's example. Kind of does. Everyone's ghost. waiting for me to do something great on my pilgrimage, something that will forever change our lives for the better. If I don't, it's like I failed, and that reflects badly on both me and my father. The work you're doing here is more important than anything any Quarian's ever done before. Whoa, shit. Yes, I know. But you have to understand Quarian culture. We're a very insular society. The events beyond the flotilla don't much matter to the average citizen. Our greatest dream is that one day, we'll return to our homeworld and drive out the Geth. But even if we stop Seren, that's not going to happen. There's still millions of Geth behind the Veil. Until they're gone, our exile will continue. What would you need to bring back to make everyone happy? Something that would help us better understand the Geth. They've changed significantly since the exile. They've continued to evolve. We've done our best to study them, but it's not easy. They're very reclusive. Until recently, they never went beyond the borders of the Vale. And all the Geth we run into now are under Seren's control. We'd need to find Geth operating on their own independently. But I don't want this to get in the way of our mission, Shepard. First we stop Seren, then I'll worry about my own problems. 
I didn't really notice this the first few times I played the game because I don't pick up on subtext, and I might even be seeing subtext where there isn't any. But Tally talks about how the Geth are always hiding behind the veil, the veil, the veil. Meanwhile, Tally is wearing a headscarf-looking thing and has a mask, and it's like she's always wearing a veil. I don't, I don't know if Bioware's not subtle or if I'm stupid. It's one or the other or both of those. What was your father like? It wasn't easy growing up as the daughter of one of the Admiralty. Even before he joined the board, he was a prominent figure. People looked to him for leadership. He had to set an example, and he expected the same of his daughter. Plus, he was pretty strict, a military man through and through. He never allowed me to settle for anything less than excellence. As a kid, I sometimes felt like he was pushing me too hard. But now I'm old enough to appreciate what he taught me. The world doesn't owe us anything. If we want something in life, we have to earn it. Where was your mother in all this? Mother was around, but she always seemed to kind of blend into the background. Almost like she was overshadowed by my father. He tends to do that to people. She passed on about five years ago. Some airborne virus that swept through the fleet. Happens sometimes when the filters start to break down. I think my father took it pretty hard. After she was gone, he became even more focused on his work. I think that was his way of dealing with the grief. Sounds like a tough upbringing. You don't resent your father at all? Like I said, it wasn't easy. My father's not the kind of person you bond with. And he wasn't around all that much. Too busy. People counted on him, and he took his duties seriously. Even when he was around, he always seemed a bit distant. Like his mind was always somewhere else. Come to think of it, I can't ever remember seeing him smile. Not once. It's like he was always weighed down by all that responsibility. I mean, I know he cares about me, but he never really showed it. Not in the usual way. I guess the best thing I can say about my father is that I respect him. I want to talk about something else. Like what? It's a good question. Uh... Nothing. <laughs> I should go. I want to talk about something else. See you later. I should go. I want to talk about something else. Goodbye. Alright, hi Garrus. Do you have anything to talk about? Commander, good to see you. You've been with CSEC a while. Have you seen much action? Well, not as much as you, but... Yeah, I've seen some interesting things. I bet you have. Anything in particular that stands out? I remember this Solarian geneticist I was sent to investigate. That case was a bit... disturbing. What happened? Why were you investigating him? I was tasked with tracking black market trade on the Citadel. Most of it harmless, nothing I needed to pursue. But during the course of my investigation, I noticed an increase in the trade of body parts. Organs, mostly. We usually get a few of those, but not the numbers I was seeing. We weren't sure if there was a new black market lab, or if some freak was harvesting organs from citizens. You've seen this before on the Citadel? Every so often, some lab sells unwanted parts through the black market. But they're not as bad as the psychos. I remember this one Elcor diplomat we caught in my first year on the job. He was hacking people up and selling their organs. Had the station in a bit of a panic. Elcor did that? But this case wasn't that clear-cut. Turns out, there was more going on than we first realized. So how did you figure out what was happening? First, we got a hold of a sample and ran DNA tests. The weird thing was, the match led us to a Turian who was still alive and was very convinced he'd never lost his liver. After a bit of digging, I discovered this Turian worked briefly for Dr. Salion, the geneticist. So I went to his lab, hoping to find evidence of cloned organ development. But there was nothing. No Salarian hearts, no Turian livers, not one Krogan testicle. <laughs> You're kidding, right? Why would anyone want Krogan testicles? Some Krogan believe that testicle transplants can increase their virility, counteract the effects of the genophage. It doesn't work, but that doesn't stop them from buying. They'll pay up to 10,000 credits each. That's 40,000 for a full set. Somebody's making a killing out there. That line there, like... 
that feels just a little like it ex that line there the line about you know they'll pay 10,000 each that's 40 grand for a full set that's clearly something that was put in to establish to the player hey by the way Krogan Krogan males have four testicles just so you know but in universe Shepard should know that and Garrus should know that Shepard should know that. It's just like a thing that people know, so... I don't know. What'd you do about the geneticist? I brought in some of his employees for interrogation to see if I could get them to talk. While I was interviewing one of them, I came across something suspicious. Yeah? Go on. One of my detainees started bleeding profusely during the interview. We offered to patch him up, and he got frantic, freaked out. I ordered a full exam to find out what was going on. Our medics found incisions all over his body, some of them fresh. That was our big break. These people weren't just Dr. Saleon's employees. They were test tubes. Walking, living test tubes. He was growing parts inside these people? Exactly. He cloned their organs right inside their own bodies. Then he harvested them and sold them off. Most of the victims were poor. He'd pay them each a small percentage of the sales, but only if the organs were good. Sometimes an organ wouldn't grow properly, so he'd just leave it in them. Most of them were a mess, but only on the inside, hidden so nobody could see it. I hope he got what he deserved. That's the worst part. We never caught him. Why not? What the hell happened? He ran, blew his lab, grabbed some of his employees, and headed for the nearest space dock. By the time I found out, his ship was already leaving. He threatened to kill his hostages if we tried to stop him. But you went after him anyway, right? I ordered Citadel Defense to shoot him down, but CSEC headquarters countermanded my order. They were worried about the hostages, worried about civilian casualties, and the ship was destroyed so close to the Citadel. I told them those hostages were dead anyway. He just used them to make more organs. But they wouldn't listen. I can actually see CSEC security, or Citadel. Yeah, I can actually see uh, CSEC HQ's point here. Like, you know, you don't know for certain that the hostages are dead. And also, if there's something, you don't want some guy to just be, you know, walking down the street, going to the market, just picked up a loaf of space bread, and all of a sudden, all of a sudden he looks up and there's a spaceship exploding that falls and breaks his head it's bad you don't want to do that to a person so yeah I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm gonna actively say they were correct it's not worth the risk you pursue the vessel and disable it that's the best choice they sent the military after him but he got away just the same yes they did I went to Palin and told him what I thought of him and his policies he said if I didn't like it I could quit well, I almost did all they had to do was disable that ship, stop him from running. Maybe the hostages die, maybe they don't, but at least we stopped the bastard responsible for it all. Mm. If you don't care about the fate of those hostages, then you're no better than he is. You're just a terrorist with a badge. Yeah, maybe you're right. It doesn't make it any easier, but I see your point. Just wish I could have stopped him. That's all. Yeah, no, Gar Garrus. Calm down, man. Do you have any idea what happened to Dr. Salian? I sent out feelers from time to time, hoping to find something. I thought I'd found him a while back. He changed ships and changed his name to Dr. Hart. His idea of a joke, I guess. I told the military, but they weren't convinced it was him. I got the transponder frequency for his new ship, but I just can't get anyone to check it out. And you didn't mention this when you first came on board? Hi, I'm a Spectre. I act with impunity. I'll check out the coordinates when I get a chance. I was hoping you'd say that, but Commander, take me with you when you go. If it's Saleon, I want to be there when you find him. So yeah, e looks like each crew member is going to have one little, hey, by the way, there's this lingering, lingering plot thread that's been hanging over my head for years, just waiting for some sort of space Jesus to come and fix it for me. So, uh, yeah. I didn't know that was a thing that was in the original. I thought it was just in Mass Effect 2. Hi, Ashley. Commander? Do you have a few minutes to talk, one-on-one? -on -one? Sure. 
I was just watching some mail from home. Oh, before I go, we saw Caden in a news vid about the Normandy. He's cute. Later, sis. <laughs> Let's pretend this never happened. <laughs> oh, I'm not going to yell at her for it. Um, too late. Yeah, let's poke this one. Are you interested in the lieutenant chief? No, ma'am. And anyway, Scuttlebutt says he's already sweet on someone. That was fast. What's up? He didn't come by to eavesdrop on family mail. Your family seems to be important to you. Yeah, we've always been close. Me and my sisters especially. With dad on duty so much, I had to help mom raise them. Did your father serve with the fleet? Yeah, took any crap posting he could get that offered space time. You know what? He worked his ass off trying to get recognized, but he never made it above servicemen third class. He was real proud when I made chief. First thing he did was salute. What about your mother? You haven't mentioned her. You must know what military wives are like. Strong because they have to be, able to raise kids while dad's away on a six-month cruise. She has a degree in planetary geology. She and Dad both wanted to see new worlds. She gave up her career to raise us, though. Good to see the space patriarchy is alive and well. You have more than one sister? Sounds like a big family. Yeah, I'm the oldest, then Abby, then Lynn. Sarah's the youngest. She's still in high school. With four girls, Dad used to say he felt more outnumbered at home than on maneuvers. This sounds like the beginnings of a very bad sitcom. Just, you know, set in space. Where did you grow up? <laughs> All over. We transferred a half a dozen times before I finished grade school. You go where personnel command sends you, right? I guess that's why I'm so tight with my sisters. We'd have to leave all our friends every two or three years. Y yeah, I think I think Ashley's like Parligo said. Her mom is definitely selling space leggings. After helping raise them, your sisters still talk to you. <laughs> Amazing. Things were tense between Sarah and me for a while. Then we bonded. Sounds like a story. Feel like sharing? Sarah got herself a boyfriend who wanted to go faster than she did, Mike. I didn't think he was a bad kid, just pushy. Lynn would send me these worried vid mails, and I'd tell her to relax. Where were you when this was going on? I was on active duty. Sarah's graduating high school this year. This was only a couple years back. They were on Amaterasu. At the time, I was assigned to Chernobyl. Same cluster, but a dozen Hawaii away. Close enough to talk regularly, too far to make it back in an emergency. I couldn't afford a fast packet flight. If he really liked her, he wouldn't be pushy. Yeah, of course. If he didn't ask at all, I'd wonder if he thought Sarah was ugly. <laughs> damned if you do, damned if you don't. Mike thought they'd go for a romantic walk in the woods, because he figured it was past time they did the deed. She levered Mike face first into a tree and left. Didn't have a scratch on her. Good thing mom and dad had us all learn some kind of self-defense. I took emergency leave and walked Sarah to school for a few days. Why didn't you tell the police? She said it wouldn't solve the real problem, and she and Mike would both become household names. It was a small colony. I said it was her call to make, that we should let her do it her way. Mom was pretty pissed about that. You said all of your sisters learned self-defense? Lynn did pistol practice, but didn't like it. She's kind of nervous. Sarah took Aikido. Abby decided to learn the sword. She always was a little weird. Likes big skirts and tops you have to tie her into. They do great things to her figure, though. So, what did you learn? One of Dad's friends taught me Marine hand-to-hand. -hand. You traveled all the way home to walk your sister to school. It was only a dozen light years. Like a day's cruise. It's not like it was going to Earth or something. My last day out, Mike was waiting for us. Sarah had told her friends, so everyone at school knew what he did. He wasn't happy. I wanted to snap him in half, but Sarah gave me this look, this let me handle it, I need to do this alone look. She kept her cool, God bless her, as he screamed in her face. She just let him vent. Then he tried to punch her. Mistake. I swear, she just flowed around him. 
Next thing I knew, he's face down on the sidewalk, and there's blood everywhere. That's unbelievable. Sarah must be as good as you. Better. I'm more or less a straight-up puncher. When he swung, she just... She wasn't there anymore, and he fell. She helped him stop the bleeding and had me call an ambulance. She told the paramedics he fell. Before they took him to the hospital, Mike touched Sarah's arm. I thought he was going to end up on the ground again. But he hung his head, whispered, I'm sorry, and started crying. And she hugged him. The Williams women are a decisive bunch, Commander. We do things when we're ready. Not before, not after. Why don't we have Sarah on our squad, asks Ghosty. Uh, I don't know, she's young or something? She she would have been competent enough to get her entire unit not killed on Eden Prime? So, you know, then there would have been too many people there, and it's not. It's like, well, we can't have, like, seven people join the crew. That's weird, okay. Well, you go off and have your own adventures. We'll leave without you. Your sister's something else. But you didn't mention your father at all. Was he on deployment? Dad always wanted to serve in space, but he wanted us to have real ground under our feet. He'd say, space is beautiful, but you can't raise a family there. I cannot rest from travel. I will drink life to the lees. All times I've enjoyed greatly have suffered greatly, both with those that loved me and alone. For always roaming with a hungry heart, much have I seen and known. Cities of men and manners, climates, councils, governments. Bored now. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, <laughs> all right, let's not actively shit on it. <laughs> that is a long quote to just kind of randomly drop in the middle of a conversation there. But, uh, yeah, let's take the, let's take the most neutral one. I never thought I'd hear you reciting poetry. Just because I can drill you between the eyes at 100 meters doesn't mean I can't like sensitive stuff. Just don't spread it around. Ulysses was my dad's favorite poem. Every time he shipped out, he recorded me reading it. He had a dozen versions when he retired. So, so Ashley's, she, she's not like the other girls. She can, she can drink with the, with the, never mind. I am not the guy to be shitting on a girl for that. Uh, let's say, really. Does he still like it? I sure hope so. I read it to his grave every time I go home. Dad passed on a few years back. He's probably still watching, though. Ghosty, you may shit on Ashley at will. You mean from wherever we go after death? Dead on, Skipper. He's with God now. That's not a problem with you, is it? That I believe in God? Your beliefs are your business. I'm your commanding officer, not your moral compass. I appreciate that, Skipper. I should get back to my duties. Didn't mean to take up so much of your time. No comment, Shepard. <laughs> uh... What's your opinion of the last mission? Not sure I buy Dr. Tassoni's story about her and her mom not talking. They're family, right? I mean, yeah, Jeebus, you know, they, they have to... Like, it's very clearly an intentional choice. Even when Shepard's... Even when Shepard's answers are very short, you very, very rarely see the exact words in the choice here uh, that show up when Shepard says that. And I think part of that is just, you know, to keep the player engaged... Part of that is just, you know, a lot of times Shepard will have an answer that's a sentence or two long, and they need to sum it up here in three words or so. So if I say, you know, I believe Liara, I believe her, Shepard is not going to say, quote, I believe her, end quote. I think she's being straight with us. Or at least I don't think she lies very often. Yeah, she's probably really bad at it. Too bad those ruins got destroyed. I mean, they lasted thousands of years. That's impressive. Yeah, so, like, that whole sen that long sentence answer from Shepard, you can't fit that on this dialogue wheel. It's just, you know, it's too long. So, they get the gist across, and for the most point, for mo yeah, for the most part, 
if you know, you know, the top right option is Paragony, the bottom right option is Renegade, the middle one is neutral, over here is asking questions. If you know that basic thing and you see the words, you can generally get the gist of what Shepard is going to say, even if it doesn't spell out the exact words. Uh, meanwhile, Boxy and, Boxy and Ghost are going back and forth. Shh. Uh, in my game, when Shep was like, she's bad at lying, Ash went, I should ask her about her sex life like a creep. <laughs> oh, God. Dismissed, Chief. Ma'am. You know what she is? She's probably, yeah, she's probably in this, uh, yep. She's in this room back here. That was previously unused. Yes, uh, meet Liara. Folks who have not yet met Liara, by which I mean Jeebus, this is Liara. She's blue. Commander, are you coming to check up on me? You look much better. How are you feeling? Dr. Chakwas assures me I am going to be fine. I was impressed with her knowledge of Asari physiology. You're in good hands. Dr. Chakwas knows what she's doing. I never properly thanked you for saving me from the Geth, Commander. If you hadn't shown up, I... I'm just glad we got there in time. So am I. I know you took a chance bringing me aboard this ship. I have seen the way your crew looks at me. They do not trust me. But I am not like Benezia. I will do whatever I can to help you stop Saren. I promise. So, Liara is a researcher who is studying the Protheans, the long-dead alien race of 50,000 years ago, whose beacon is the reason that we know the Reapers are coming. Uh, her mother, Benezia, works with Saren, who is the big bad. So, that's awkward. Don't worry, Liara. I trust you. I know you won't let me down. It means a lot to hear you say that, Commander. Thank you. Also... Uh, fun fact, Liara is the only bisexual love interest in Mass Effect 1. Not the series, but in Mass Effect 1. So, basically, for, for your Commander Shepard in Mass Effect 1, if you want to do a romance, your options are Liara and whichever one of Caden and Ashley has different parts than you. And that's it. Tell me about yourself, Liara. Me? I am afraid I am not very interesting, Commander. I spend most of my time on remote digs, unearthing mundane items buried in long-forgotten Prothean ruins. You must enjoy something about it. I love my work. Seeking out history's lost secrets has a special appeal for me. You were actually touched by working Prothean technology. That is why I find you so fascinating, Commander. No, Commander Shepard cannot romance the consort. With... There are two characters you can romance that are not at one point playable squad mates. Okay, there's a difference between bang and romance. But yes, I'm sure you can bang Shire. Sounds like you want to dissect me in a lab somewhere. What? No! I did not mean to insinuate. Uh, I never meant to offend you, Shepard. I only meant that you would be an interesting specimen for an in-depth study. Uh, no, that's even worse. Calm down, Liara. I was only joking. Joking? Oh, by the goddess. How could I be so dense? You must think I am a complete and utter fool. <laughs> now you know why I prefer to spend my time in the field with data disks and computers. I always seem to say something embarrassing around other people. Please, just pretend this conversation never happened. Do you know why Benezia joined up with Saren? I don't understand it. She was always outspoken about the need for the Asari to become more involved in shaping galactic events. Maybe she thought allying herself with Saren would somehow be for the greater good in the long run. At least I hope so. It, it, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty tame, Jeebus, all told. It, it, it is not a mini-game like God of War. Uh, 
Yeah. This hurts you, doesn't it? None of this makes any sense to me. I have not spoken to Benezia in many years, but I know her, and this was not like her. Something changed. I'd like to know more about the Asari. We were the first species to discover the Citadel. We were instrumental in forming the Council, and we always strive to be the voice of peaceful cooperation in galactic disputes. My people believe we are all part of a single galactic community. Each species contributes something to the greater whole. Although we seek to understand other species, it seems few of them seek to understand us. The galaxy is filled with rumors and misinformation about my people. Like what? Most of the inaccuracies are centered around our mating rituals. My species is monogendered. Male and female have no real meaning for us. We still require a partner to reproduce. This second parent, however, may be of any species and any gender. So it's not just that Liara is bisexual, it's that the Asari are pansexual, essentially. Shepard here can say something that is more racist than anything Ashley Williams ever says, which is impressive. I don't understand. Your species can mate with anyone? Mating is not quite the proper term, not as you understand it. Physical contact may or may not be involved, but it is not an essential element of the Union. The true connection is mental. Our physiology allows us to meld with other beings. We can touch the very depths of their minds. We explore the genetic memory of their species. We share the most basic elements of their individual and racial identities. We then pass these traits onto our daughters. It is how we learn to grow as a species and how we develop a greater understanding of other races. What happens to your partner after the union? Every relationship is different. Some unions are a single encounter with both parents parting ways afterwards. Others can be more long term. Sometimes an Asari and her partner will stay together for many decades. Yeah, Ghost, the... <laughs> we kill them like we're a praying mantis. The Asari are interesting. I... sort of? I, I don't think so, but... There's definitely a physical element. Do you know who Matriarch Benezia chose as her partner? She rarely spoke of her partner. Though I know my father, if you want to use that term, was another Asari. I thought you always needed another species to serve as one of the parents. Think about it, Shepard. If we were not able to mate with our own species, we would have died out long before we ever mastered space flight and left our home world. She's got you there, Shepard. Human with our own kind is no longer common. Not for the purposes of reproduction. Most Asari believe it weakens our species. Asari daughters inherit racial traits from the father species. If both parents are Asari, then nothing has been gained, or so conventional wisdom would hold. I am what is sometimes called a pureblood, though no Asari would ever be cruel enough to say the word to my face. It is a great insult among my people. It is possible Benezia's partner was embarrassed by their union. She may have been too ashamed to publicly acknowledge me as her offspring. So... So imagine, imagine, imagine walking, like the, okay, in a vacuum, yes. The idea of turning blue, pure blood on its head as an insult, that's really cool. That is really, really cool. I like that a lot. But still, imagine walking up to someone, you know, not from another culture, but from another race of people and saying, hello, person I have met five minutes ago. Here is my name, here are some basic facts about me, and here is the slur that people use against my people when they are being exceedingly cruel. Just so you know it, please don't ever say it. It's like... It's a wild choice. <laughs> Would you like to tell Ashley? Uh, basically think of it like an Asari fetus is like a little clone, but then when the mother melds with someone else, she takes half of that clone code and randomizes it so it's a baby instead of a clone. <laughs> Please tell Ashley so she can use it later. Here you go, Chief Williams. Here is the word pure blood, 
When you say it to me in a fit of rage, be sure to use the hard D. That way, it will hurt more. <sighs> uh, Paragon. Maybe she wanted to meet you but couldn't. Something could have happened to her. Maybe she passed away. You might be right. I hope you are. But I have no way to know for sure. Venezia never spoke of her partner. Whatever happened, it caused her too much pain to dwell on it. She raised me by herself, though that is not uncommon. Many Asari raise their children alone, particularly if the father species is short-lived. Often the partner will pass on long before the child reaches maturity. It's weird that this question, like this is clearly a question, but it's in the typical place for a renegade dialogue option. I'm still gonna choose it though. You Asari live for a thousand years. What happens when your partner dies? Few sapient species live as long as my kind. We have learned to take a philosophical approach to our unions. We do not focus on the inevitable loss of our partners. Instead, we enjoy the time we spend with them. And even after they're gone, a part of them lives on in us. The union is a connection that transcends both time and space. Here's an analogy that Ashley Williams might get. It's kind of like their partners are dogs. I should go. Goodbye, Shepard. Okay, so we just learned a lot about Liara and the Asari. And I get the feeling you want to ask me something, Commander. I just wanted to talk. Of course, Shepard. What did you want to talk about? Uh, nothing, actually. Just making sure I had all the dialogue options. I do. Bye. I should go. Goodbye, Shepard. Okay, I think we are finally done talking to people. It is time to go shoot things. Uh, I don't think we ever went over to the Athens system. Commander, urgent message from Alliance Command coming in. I'll patch it through. Hey, look Shepard, at that. this is Admiral Hackett from Alliance Command. Yeah, I know we've, we've got a situation here, and you're the only one that can handle it. What do you need, Admiral? There's an Alliance training ground where we test weapons and technology and live fire simulations. One of the VIs we use to simulate enemy tactics in the drills is no longer responding to our override commands. It's gone rogue. Are you telling me this computer is thinking on its own? We're not stupid, Shepard. This is a virtual intelligence, not a true AI. It's not self-aware, and it can't access any external systems. We didn't do anything illegal here. Mm-hmm. Virtual intelligence support is critical to our military success. VIs process thousands of status reports and react in nanoseconds. No human can do that. Mm -hmm. We need you to fight your way through the training ground of the VI core and manually disable it. You're doing a lot of uh, expositing and justifying there, Admiral. You know that, right? Can't you disable it remotely? Our fail-safes aren't responding. The VI operates on a closed network. It can affect any external systems, but we don't have any direct access to its processes. We could bomb it from orbit, but the damage to the facility would be catastrophic. We'd prefer to have someone shut down the core. Someone like you. I know Spectre's answered the Council, but you're still human. You're still part of the Alliance military, and right now we need you. The VI controls all the facility's weapons, drones, and automated defenses. You're the only one that can pull this off, Shepard. Good luck. Sounds like a terrible use of Commander Shepard. Like, really? If Shepard is such a valuable asset, and this is such a dangerous mission, just don't do it. Just bomb the thing. Uh, a VI is a virtual intelligence. It's like, um, it's like Siri. Uh, so I assume as you progress, new planets and places pop up? Uh, yes. In fact, here is a new planet or place that has popped up. Basically, things, uh, destinations pop up as they become plot relevant. And here is one that is now plot, rel plot relevant. It is the local cluster. And why is it called the local cluster? Because it is local to us. We can go to the soul system. A system, soul system. You gotta get that dough system. It's the soul system. All right, so we are taking on a rogue VI and all its rogue VI buddies. 
So that means we need uh, Tally, because she can hack fucking anything. Jeebus wants me to wait. Alright, fine. I can wait. I'll hydrate or something. You made me wait for that. Well. If we bring the whole crew, will it double the population of Pluto in a single landing? Maybe. Maybe. There will eventually be a mission to Mars. Not in this game, though. Alright, so let's take Tally. And you know what? I don't think we've had Tally and Garrus together since the Citadel. Let's take Tally and Garrus. Can <laughs> we leave Ashley on Neptune? There will be a ch there will be a mission on Earth in Mass Effect Three. I don't think there's anything on Earth until then. Uh, at this point, the mission is to drive around blowing up shitty turrets. Doing sweet moon wheelies is uh, always at least a secondary objective. Hey, I'm a recruit summon. Probably because I leveled up. I don't know how I became a recruit, but presumably it's him. Hitting a certain level threshold. Whoop. Oh, bubble in this. That's fine. Guns blew it up. Alright, where's the last one? There's the last one. Hello, last one. How had I never shot you before? Hello. Now I have shot you. Great! We'll be back. And now a full 90 minutes into the stream, we might actually do some core Mass Effect gameplay. Scary, I know. Uh, everybody's suits have gravitational adjustment matrices. You're something. I'm sure there's a plot. I'm, I'm sure there's a justification in the lore. But, yeah, mechanically, they said fuck it to moon gravity. Yeah, something, something, Mass Effect fields. Okay. And we got a bunch of stuff. That's cool. Over here, there's more stuff. Still cool. Whole bunch of fives and sixes on that uh, stuff, so it's probably good stuff. I have a biotic barrier. Can't do anything with this power junction? No. We got it's probably all, just a, It's probably just a thing to blow up. Okay. I should mention I did tweak the sound balance. To put the uh, sound effects, specifically of the weapon firing, a little bit lower, I noticed that it was uh, a bit overpowering during combat, so let me know how it sounds. Haven't heard anybody complaining so far, so hopefully it's okay. There are eight exclamation points in this room, so 
That's of interest. Let's go over here. So do you just need to be shot? Toxic gas is being vented into the bunkers. Great. Clear. So don't get too close. Perimeter secured. Lights on the optical mainframes flicker and die. The first of the three computing clusters containing the All VI clear. is offline. Oh, so there's going to be one of these in each of the each of the three areas. So I didn't get lucky. It's just there's one in all three. Okay, that means more stuff. Let's give this thing a whirl. I smell trouble. Oh, they're advanced assault drones makes these drones advance. Shields disabled. Off shields. Just shoot things, guys. Kill confirmed. Oh, there was one behind us. No wonder. You dummies. Hey. Boom. All targets down. There we go. There's the door control. Check the room for boxes. Ghosty coming in with the Paragon emote. Paragon emotes can be yours for the low, low price of 1,000 biddies. No, but um, actually, that's exactly what it is. Folks who've donated a thousand bits, you unlock the Paragon Emote. Hooray, Paragon Emote. Now here's a bunch more stuff to shoot. Let's, uh, let's not shoot that with a shotgun. It seems like a bad idea. Let's take it from a distance. Kinetic barrier fields powering up throughout the bunker complex. Well, that seems bad. They just... The VI just put up shields. It's like, don't shoot me. I'll shield myself. I'll make myself even more annoying. Really, Garrus? It's a perimeter secure. Yeah. It's a mainframe. It's an angry mainframe, but that's all it is. Negative contacts, Commander. Really? That one wasn't even covering the whole thing. This VI is not trying very hard. Like, look, I don't even have to. You can leave that one. Oh, look at these guys. They are mad. They are not happy. Eat this! Oh. Oh, they were really not happy. I see. They were not happy. Oh, these are advanced rockets. 
rocket drones. That's part of the reason we died so quickly last time. Okay, are we done now? Was that it? Just beat the advanced rocket drones? And also the... Explode I have expect something to explode anytime I walk into one of these rooms. Additional security drones powering up. Yep, more enemies in the last room. Okay, if her best life didn't involve killing people, it would be fine. They're not even hiding. <laughs> They're just like, look, we're drones. <laughs> maybe if I, maybe if she didn't have drones. You ever considered that? Advanced assault drone machine. burst of white noise over all frequencies nearly deafens you. Your hard suit heads up displays your hard suit's heads up display interprets it into a series of zeros and ones. All right, let me see if I can translate this out of binary. You can that's a thing you can do, right? Help. Ominous. Your specialization class will replace your base class in the talents on the squad screen. Talent ranks in your base class transfer over to your specialization class. Go to your squad screen to view the bonuses you gain with each rank in your specialization class. Ooh. So I can be a shock trooper or a nemesis. Uh, shock troopers are highly trained killing machines. Uh, they get increased health, increased damage protection, uh, it improves the immunity or barrier ability, and it improves the adrenaline ability. That sounds cool. Or I can be a nemesis for a whole bunch of stuff I don't use. <laughs> I could be a shock trooper from VR Troopers or a nemesis from Mass Effect. Well, I think I'm going to be a shock trooper because I really don't use uh, my damaging biotic abilities. So, I will be a shock trooper. Okay, and that's job done. That's mission accomplished. That's we beat the moon. Hooray!